This is the Tunecraft Vibe Volume 1, a brand new sample pack that contains 11 complete kits of smooth, professionally recorded and processed guitar loops focusing on jazz and soul genres. Suitable for all kinds of lo-fi music, it also contains a collection of drum loops as well as some bass and keys loops, so you'd have everything you need to start your beats within minutes. In this video, I'll show you exactly what you get with this pack, how it is all organized, and then we'll make a track with it so you can see it in action and we can see a couple of tips and tricks on how to use the samples. So with this pack, you get 11 complete guitar kits for a total of 76 guitar loops, each of which have a processed and an unprocessed version. You will also have 30 bonus loops for basses, keys and drums, as well as more than 200 individual drum hits so you can make your own patterns with them. So when you open the pack, you get this. Everything is labeled with the name, the tempo it was recorded in and the key of each loop. To make it easier to navigate in each folder, you have an export of the full kit with all the tracks baked in. This way it's easy to listen to them quickly and find a vibe that you like. Once you know which kit you want to use, you'll find the separate tracks in its corresponding folder. Each loop has been exported twice. In the fully baked folder, the loops have been heavily processed to instantly give them that old-school vintage lo-fi vibe and be ready to use as is. But if you want to go deeper into sound processing and get a complete control over your sound, the just amped folder is there for you. These are the clean recordings of each loop, right out of the amp and without any additional processing. But we'll come back to them in a few moments, so let's check out the fully baked folder for now. In there you'll have the loops for both the rhythmic and lead guitars. And for each of them you'll find different versions. Some are slight variations and some are completely different takes. This is all to give you the flexibility you need to make your own tracks out of them. Guitar sample packs often provide only short 4 to 8 bar cycling loops, with which you can be stuck with if you want to create more than just a repeating beat. With this pack, you can expect to find everything you need to create a full song arrangement, including main parts, alternate variations, bridges and more. For example, let's take the second kit named Timeless. Let's hear the rhythmic guitar. If you don't like the strumming on the block strings, you have an alternative version of this loop. And then the variation of this guitar is a different chord progression that can fit the same tune for a following chorus or verse. As a bonus, some kits also include their corresponding bassline and chord progressions, so you'd have a couple of extra instruments to populate your tracks. And in addition to that, you also have a bonus folder in which you'll find some drum loops, individual drum hits and some different background noises. So you should have everything you need to start your beat right away. And again, all the loops are tempo and key labels for ease of use during your sessions. So now let's build a track quickly to see a couple of ways you could use the samples. I like this one, the kit number 5. That's at 125 BPM, so I'll use this tempo in my project to make it easier. So let's go in the fully baked folder and drag the chord file on the track. Ok, I like those two first chords, so let's take only that and duplicate them so they look nicely. Now, I like the tone of detuned samples for lo-fi, so I will detune them down two semitones. This will make the tonality of the sample go from G major to F major. Now, let's see what we have for the lead.
Okay, so they are good elements in both, but I would also like to create my own melody with them. So let's load them into different simplers on two different tracks. And don't forget to tune them down to semitones so they stay in the same tonality than the chords. So then you can put the simplers in slice mode and turn the sensitivity down so each slice represents one musical phrase. You can then play those phrases with the keys of your keyboard to rearrange them in the order you want. So now let's do the same thing with the second lead, so we can have kind of a question and answer relationship between the two. Okay, let's finish off with the first one again. Okay, I'm happy with that. Now that we have the harmony and the melody down, let's add some drums. In the bonus folder of the pack, you have some pre-made drum loops that you can use, but I want to write my own drum pattern, so let's use some of the included drum hits instead. In there, you have loads of samples you can use. You have some kicks, some snares, various percussions, cymbals, and hi-hats, everything you need. I kind of like this one that is very smooth, very in the low tone. Let's use this one. Now I need a snare or claps, and I will actually select a couple so I can layer them. I like this one. And I'll select those two claps as well. Now I need some hi-hats. Let's try this one. And I'll take some cymbals as well. Let's try some right. Okay, I will fiddle around with them to write a pattern that I like. Okay, so for the snares and claps, I would like to offset them a little bit so they will have more texture than if they were all playing exactly at the same time. There are different ways to do that, but there's one I like to do. So basically I have this snare and these two claps, and I want to delay the two claps. So I will add a simple delay after each of those claps. Then on the simple delays, I will link the left and the right channel, so it is mono. I will unsync the delay time, so I will have finer controls on how much I want to delay them. The feedback will stay at zero, so only one repetition is played. And I will put the dry wet signal all the way up so we only hear the delayed signal. So I'll do that for the other one as well. Now the trick is to link these delay times of those delays to a macro knob so we can move them both at the same time. So I'll link them both to the same macro knob. And I want to delay one less than the other, so I will reduce the max value for the delay uh, by half on one of them. So now when we turn up this macro knob, one clap will be delayed twice as much as the other one, and the snare will stay in place, so we can set them apart with this. Alright, so I feel this is missing a bass, so let's add one quickly. I'll go for a very smooth bass tone, so I'll start with a sine wave, then I'll add a saturation on it to add some harmonics, and then I'll add a low pass filter to cut the excess. I'll also make sure the bass is mono by reducing the voice to 1, and I'll add some glide as well. Now for the notes to use, remember we are in F major, we started with G major, and then we dropped down two semitones. So to make sure I only use notes from this scale, I can use a scale effect. I'll pick one for the C major scale, and then make it F major. So now let's play along with the loop to find a bass line.
So from there we could call it done, but we used only samples that were processed. So let's see what kind of processing you could do on the clean versions. Say I want to have these chords to sound more like if they were played by a tape player in a room to push them more in the back of the mix. So first let's swap this sample for its clean version. So now let's think about what a tape player would do to the sound. A tape player can play a very narrow range of frequencies, so I will add an EQ and filter out the lows and the highs. It would add a gentle distortion, so I will add the saturator with the smoothest presets. It would also compress the sound quite a bit, so let's add a compressor as well. And the speed of the tape wouldn't be steady, so the pitch of the sound will go up and down a little. And you can emulate that with a simple delay effect. We'll take the same setting than the one from the snare, so we'll link the right and left channel, we'll unsync it, feedback at zero and draw it all the way up. From there you can right click and put it into repitch mode, and then you can automate the delay time so it goes up and down, and it will affect the pitch, but better be gentle with it. And finally, because the tape player we want to simulate is supposed to be in a room, let's add a reverb effect as well. The decay time doesn't need to be high, this is to push it back in the mix. And why not put a wider effect as well? It's a free plugin to make a sound more stereo, so it could help fill the space and separate the rhythmic and lead guitars a bit more. So there you have it, this is the TuneCraft Vibes Volume 1, a pack of professionally crafted jazz guitar samples, with a lot of extra samples to give you all the tools and flexibility you need to create your own tracks for them. I wish you all an excellent day, and I hope to see you all again soon. If you want to get this pack, you will find the link for it in the description. With it, you will also find a coupon code to get it with a 20% discount. It will only work for a few weeks, so check it out.